Hey guys, welcome back. I want to talk about the Flatmaster 250. I decided to go out and buy one of these uh, fairly expensive flat panels produced by Pegasus Astro because I've been having some trouble with taking flats, or at least I think I may be having trouble taking some flats. Certainly they're not always working, and I can't help but think that maybe some of the problem is just the method I'm using of taking the flats. So I thought I'd share with you at least my first initial experience with the Flatmaster, how to use it, how to connect it with Nina and Astro Photography Tool. So let's get started. Well, there are several ways of controlling the Flatmaster through Nina and Astro Photography Tool. Nina has a direct access through the to the flat panel through the flat panel display in the equipment tab. You can attach to the Flatmaster just calling in the driver here in this tab and then connecting to it and then you'll have access to the on off switch and to adjust the illumination as you see here. Plus if you're using the flat wizard it will given a an illumination it will find the appropriate exposure time for each of the filters for in a gain you set. Now if you're using Astro Photography Tool they don't have a direct connection to the flat panel. You can use the software that Pegasus Astro provides on their website. You can just download it, go to the settings section here and connect to the flat panel, then back to the control tab here. Then you can adjust the illumination setting to say 75% if that's what you want. And you can save profiles for later use. For example, in my case, I'm going to use all filters are going to be set to the 75% illumination setting. So I can enter in an all filters here and save it. And that way, the next time I connect to the flat panel, I can just click on the all filters and the, all, the illumination will automatically go to 75%. So Nina has need of support for the Flatmaster and Astro Photography Tool does not, but you of course can use the software that comes with the Pegasus Astro Flatmaster with Nina or with Astro Photography Tool, it doesn't matter. Let's go take a look at the hardware before we get back into Nina and show how to use the Flatmaster. This is the Pegasus Astro Flatmaster 250. It's the larger of the two flat panels that they sell, and of course I needed to do that in order to match the aperture of my C925. The flat panel is fairly simple. Now, I happen to have it mounted here and clamped between two blocks here so that I can hold it up vertical and take flats indoors, as we'll discuss here in a minute. But the panel basically comes with the panel itself and this USB cable. I have the cable plugged into the ultimate power box here. So when you're done with the night's imaging and you have the SCT outside, you can rotate the SCT so that it's pointed straight up and just lay the flat panel on top if you have the dew shield. Now I can't do that because this dovetail plate here from uh, Los Mandy actually projects out beyond the end of the SCT. So I can't lay the panel directly on the edge of the SCT. I'll have to lay it on the edge of the uh, dew shield, which is typically what I would do anyway, is to take flats with the dew shield if I took lights with the dew shield. Just wanted to show you what the panel looks like. It comes with these little um, offsets here that you can adjust the spacing of, slide them in, tighten it, hold it in place. That way you can guarantee with the equal spacing around that you're centering the panel on the dew shield for the SCT. Now, you can operate the flat panel uh, using software provided with the flat panel itself, but just in case you wanted to do some adjustments on your own, you didn't want to rely on the software, all you have to do is come over to a little button here. If you notice, there's a little tiny button here, and you can. there are five different settings, so I could, right now it's off, and right now I could turn it on, and of course you can't see anything, there's a fairly bright it's not very bright, it's just a flat panel, so it's going to put out relatively low levels of light and it's difficult to see during the daylight. Let's go over to Nina and show how we use this to take flats. Hey, we're in Nina in the equipment section in the flat panel and you can see that I've selected the flat master and we are attached. Now, uh, as part of this table here, I've already preloaded values in this table trained from the flat wizard. I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. Uh, within the flat panel equipment window here, we can turn the panel on and we can adjust the exposure setting as we need to. So we have direct control over the flat panel, which is nice. Now, down here is a critical setting that I want to try out. 
It says use exposure times trained with the flat wizard. When we get ready to do this test, we're going to turn that on and hopefully it will tell the sequencer to come back and pick the exposure time and the gain for a given filter and set the flat panel to 75% brightness level. And it'll repeat that for all the filters and when it gets to a dash, it'll just skip that. And presumably it'll go over to the next gain table, skip these filters, and then for the HA03 and S2, it will apply a different longer exposure, same illumination, but for each of the narrow band filters. Let's go over to the flat wizard and see where these numbers come from. But I'm just gonna have it take one flat. I just wanna make sure I get the exposure setting right. The gain I use for a luminance channel is 50, so I'm gonna type that in. The luminance filter, the minimum exposure time, I'm setting to 0.5, I know it's gonna be around two to three. The max exposure time is 600. We'll leave that at two. The flat panel brightness I'm going to set to 75%. The target median value is going to be at uh, mid-range 50% with a bit of a tolerance at 15. So what this should do is take the luminous filter, set the gain, and iterate uh, these parameters, the exposure time, to get an exposure within this range that I've specified here, it should also turn on the flat panel and put the brightness at 75%. So let's run it and see what happens. If we go over to the Nina directory, here's the flat wizard. It came up with 2.5 seconds, gain 50. Right, 2.5 is about right, considering that I set mine at, two, at 275. Let's go over to Pix Insight and see if that file has the right exposure setting. We can bring up the statistics process, and yeah, sure enough, it's at 32,000. So exposure setting of 2.5 seconds works just fine. Let's go back over to Nina, the equipment tab, flat panel, and you can see it's changed the value here to 2.5 seconds. Now I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to 2.75 because that's what I have other numbers at. It did apparently turn on the flat panel. It did set the brightness level to 75% and it came up with a, an exposure setting of 2.5 seconds, which is what it should have come up with. Then you would tick this, use exposure times trained with flat wizard. You notice that right now the flat panel light is turned off we're at 0% brightness and it's off. So let's go over to the sequencer and call up a sequence that I created to use the flat panel to take flats. So here's a sequence. Now I'm going to get rid of this target sequence here. All right, and this sequence, we're just going to take flats. So the flat, the type of image that we're taking is a flat. We're not going to start guiding. We're not going to slew to the target and we're not going to center on the target and there's no autofocus. So it's just taking images. Now, what we'll see over here is that I have the total number of flats that I want to take in this column. Now, exposure time is set to zero. Supposedly, if I set time to zero and I have this ex use exposure times trained with flat wizard, it should be picking the exposure time from here as long as this is turned on and you can see that it is there. We have a flat type so that tells it that we are taking flats and it knows that the flat master is attached. We have the filters listed here and I'm using the default values of gain and offset here, acting on the assumption that when it goes back to the tab here, it's going to see the gain is 50 for the luminance filter, the exposure time is 2.75 seconds, and we use the flat panel at 75% illumination. So that's what should be happening, I assume. Now I'm not going to run all of these. Let's just cut this down. I'm going to turn off most of them. I'm going to take the total number of exposures down to one and just see what it does, see if it properly pulls numbers out of the table that we set up. All right, so let's go ahead and run this sequence. It's warning me about the temperature. We're not worried about temperature at this point, so we'll just let it run. Now you can see we already have a problem here. It didn't pull the exposure time for the luminance filter, or in this case the red filter. It's using zero or the minimum exposure time that the ASI 1600 is capable of. It doesn't appear to have changed the gain. Now notice here that the exposure is being run at 70 seconds. So in fact, it did go in and pull out the proper exposure time for the HA filter, but it did not do that for the luminance and the red filter. I'm going to pause it here and let it finish taking this exposure. Let's go back and look at what happened here. It is supposed to pull out the exposure time for the filters from the flat panel table here and use that, turn on the flat panel at the proper illumination level, use these exposures, this gain, and then take, a, take the flats based on the uh, settings in the sequencer here. 
What it did uh, for the luminance and the red filters, it did, it ignored the exposure times and just used the minimum exposure that the camera is capable of. Also, it turns out that for the HA and the O3 filters, it did pull out the correct exposure times and use those. Now let's go over and see what the files look like. And it looks like they're going to be okay. So these should all be in the median range of 32,000. Here we have 34,000, so that's fine. So it is turning on the flat panel. Red and luminance images, minimum exposure time here. So we're getting very little, getting very little median value here because the exposure time is essentially zero. So that doesn't work. So unfortunately, ticking this to on using exposure times trained with flat wizard does not work. So let's go back over to the sequencer. I'm going to load up another sequence I created. Now in this case, you'll notice that I've got the I've got the uh, column here set to flats. I've got all of the filters lined up here. I have the the exposure times that are in that table, the ones that I trained with flat wizard, so the actual exposure times are in here. And I've got the gain also, the appropriate gain in here. So in other words, I've just taken that table over here and I've copied these numbers, at least for the exposure times and the gain, over into this sequence. So I have the proper gain and the proper exposure times. Now, in doing this, I've got to remember, though, for instance, we'll turn all of these off and we'll just do a little test. Before I run this, I need to go over to the Equipment tab, turn on the flat panel, set it up to 75%, which is why I included 75% in the title of my uh, target name here. So it's a flat at 75%. And now, presumably, if I run this, it will take a 2.75 second exposure. And so we should have something in the mid-range, and it's about 35. So it's, again, a little bit brighter than what I originally trained it at, but that's correct. So that is working. So if you're going to use the flat panel with Nina, the thing you're going to have to do is set up whatever you trained your exposure times for and your gains for your filters, put them in a, a separate imaging sequence as I have done here, and then keep a reminder in the name of the sequence file of what illumination to set the flat panel at, and then manually go over to the flat panel settings and adjust settings so that you have the 75%. Let's go over to astrophotography. Okay, so here's an imaging sequence just like what we had over in Nina. We have, we'll go ahead and edit this. We have uh, the exposure time set that we trained with the, in this case, the flat wizard in Nina, but you could do that on your own. You can train the, uh, you can set the exposure times, the uh, number of exposures that you want, the gain for each filter, and then, of course, you can run this imaging sequence. However, you're first going to have to turn on the flat panel, and for that, we go over to the program, the flat master program that comes with the flat panel. So we need to connect to the uh, flat panel and it says we're connected. And we can turn, this is already at 100, so I'm gonna turn this down to 75. And I'll just get this started and take luminance flats here. And we'll go ahead and stop it. Let's go load in one of those images. And sure enough, it's the same exposure, so that's working. So using astrophotography tool to take flats with the flat panel is fairly straightforward. The ideal way to take flats with a large diameter telescope like an SCT is to simply lay the flat master right on top of, in my case, the dew shield, and then plug the flat master into the ultimate power box to power it while you take flats. In my case, I want to use the flat panel with all of my telescopes, and I've got a fairly large range of aperture sizes, ranging from obviously the small end of the Red Cat 51, then the GT81, and then the ED102. So I'm going to need a way to take flats indoors with all of my telescopes. It's okay to set it on the end of the dew shield for my 925 scope, but that's just not going to work with the smaller diameter telescopes. It's a little risky and any gust of wind would knock it off. For my indoor flat setup, I'm going to have it set up so that I can place the telescope. In this case, my SCT is sitting on a half inch thick bars here to align the central axis of the telescope with the axis of the flat panel. And then I can put a box over that to shield it from any extra stray light in the room and of course a towel over that to keep any extra light from coming in. So I think this should work 
in order to uh, keep most of the light out again in a dark room and I'll be able to take flats without having contributions from stray light in the room. But I'm going to have to use this indoor setup for the Red Cat 51 and the GT81 and the 8102. Now with the flat panel comes a different procedure, possibly a more streamlined procedure for taking flats. Here's what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing. I'm going to cool the camera down to a low indoor temperature, say 18 degrees C. There's no need it to use the same temperature as the light frames because we're going to be calibrating using dark flats. Then I can use Nina in the flat panel tab or the Pegasus Astro app to connect to the flat master and set the illumination level to a fixed value. I think I'm going to settle on about 75%. It's not very bright. You can use Nina Flat Wizard or APT's version of that called the CCD Flats Aid to dial in the correct exposure time uh, for your desired median level. I'm going to use 50% exposure level. Uh, for a given gain offset for each filter and then enter that into an imaging se sequence or an imaging plan for APT for later use. Then you'll take a set of dark flats at the selected temperature. Dark flat, if you don't know, it's where you put, it's just like a dark, except in this case we're using a temperature consistent with the flats, which in this case is 18 degrees C for me, and you're using a exposure time equal to the exposure time of the flat. You only have to do this one time because you'll have a consistent source of light. That's one of the nice things about a flat panel. That's going to give you a consistent repeatable source of light so you can simply use the same settings for your exposures, your flat exposures, over and over again. And then once you take your dark flats, you don't have to take another set. You can just use those over and over again because you're not going to be changing any of those parameters. Then you can simply execute a an imaging sequence for Nina or an imaging plan in APT to get the required number of subframes. For me, I typically take 30 subframes for my flats and then uh, average those together in Pix Insight. And when you calibrate the flats, you'll use a, the master dark flat, so you won't be using a bias frames and you won't be ticking on the optimization tab to uh, optimize the dark flats because there's no need to. The dark flats are going to have the same gain and the same exposure time and the same temperature as your flats so there's no need to optimize the the uh, dark flats and then we'll just use the pix insight image integration routine in the multiplicative mode use windsorized sigma clipping and select equalize fluxes and then that will produce your master flats and for each of those filters that you're using. I think they allow for uh, very consistent and repeatable procedures and hopefully uh, that consistency will translate into better quality flats and better quality images. I've been having some inconsistent results with flats that I've been taking with the t-shirt. thought I'd try the Pegasus Astro uh, Flat Master. It's pretty expensive at $430. Kind of an expensive experiment. And I won't say it's an experiment. I am definitely going to be using the Flat Master after this. Nina does support the Flat Master directly, so you can command and control the flat panel through the Equipment tab. The connection between the table of trained exposure times and gain settings is not working right. Pegasus Astro does provide a standalone app that you can download uh, for controlling the Flat Master illumination. It allows you to save some profiles for those illumination settings if you tend to get a little more complicated than I intend to. I hope and plan to only have one illumination setting, 75%, and just try to keep it at that for all of my uh, flat taking in the future. I did get some odd results from some exposure times. For example, for the HA filter, I got a 70 second exposure at 75% illumination. And for the S2 filter, which of course is right there next to the HA in terms of the red spectrum, it requires 140 seconds at 75% illumination. Now, is that a characteristic of the Flatmaster light spectrum? Or is it just a really dirty S2 filter? But I'm going to need an indoor setup for taking flats with my smaller refractors. So I think this is certainly going to streamline the process of taking flats. It's going to take a little longer because the exposure times are longer than using a t-shirt in the morning uh, with the morning sunlight. The exposure times are quite a bit longer. But at least the process of taking the flats will be uh, streamlined a bit. Stay tuned for follow-up evaluation of the SCT and refractor flats as I go out and do some imaging. Okay, guys, well, that's all I've got for tonight. I'll see you later, and clear skies.